Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Welcome to the March 8th through 13th General Hospital Recap. And we are together this week. Finally, because you went jet setting the world without me. I didn't even go on a jet. Thank God I did not go on a jet this week. Okay. Car pulling around the country. I drove eight eight hours away to one city (laughs) without me is the key. Join real estate and you can come. We're going to Vegas next year. You love to gamble. Oh, but I wouldn't get any work done though. I might not appreciate that. You came to conference and you could go sit in a slot machine? No, there, we had plenty of downtime, but also really good sessions. Okay. There actually re- really was a lot of, not a lot of downtime, but I've gone to conferences and conventions in the past where it is seriously go, 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 go with hardly a half hour mm-hmm. in between. And this one we at least had, uh, there, I felt like there was breathing time. So it was, well, that's good. it was nice. I'm glad you had fun, even though you went without me. I did have a good time. Well, Get your license and come with me next year. <laughs> All right, I'll get on that. Perfect. This is a crazy week, and I, I'm not just talking about the show. Oh, it was insane. Do you think, because they eventually do wind up mirroring real-life situations, do you think they're going to bring the coronavirus into a storyline soon? I mean, I feel like they should. Finn's an infectious disease doctor. He is! This is right up his alley! It's time for him to solve the world's problems. Oh. And then you can love him even more. Yes. Finn will save us. I don't know where to start. You could start at the end now that you just said that because Brit has been jet setting around the world. What if she brings the coronavirus to then? Oh, and now gives it to Julian? Who hooks <laughs> up with their best friend's dad, father in law? I don't know, especially knowing what a jerk he has been. I don't know. I, I mean, you saw it right from the beginning. I mean, it's not like eventually after drinks. They were both eyes. I, I mean, that, they're both gorgeous. So, I mean, it, but that <laughs> felt so Brit enjoyed time with men when she was here in the past Mm -hmm. but i never pictured her like she was on a mission she went there she saw him she was on a mission i didn't like it. what can she do with that although i i will give them this because honestly love scenes make me uncomfortable sometimes the way that they do them yes like depending on how they that was kind of hot it was like that was totally different i actually thought they were going to go out the window though (laughs) Because that too. when they showed the outside, and it, I was like, oh, my gosh, they're going to fall. That would have been great. That would have been really funny. There was a twist. That would have been perfect. Because that would have really happened. Exactly. If it was one of us trying to do it, heck, yeah. Yeah. I'd, like, fall out the window and break a leg or something. I don't I don't know. I love Brett. I'm glad that she's back. I feel like Brad needed her. So all on board with that. But I don't get the Julian. And I like that she didn't apologize for why she wasn't there for him right. at the same time i mean she could have taken a phone call or two but at the same time she had she, like she said she was reacclimating herself to civilian life after spending time in jail exactly so on thursdays poor charles 411 we're gonna do a whole background on Brit westbourne in case you are a new listener and or a new viewer of general hospital and have no idea she's awesome she's one of my favorite characters she she's a very unique character she's fun i like her as i was really i love to hear her Okay. Well, as I was rereading through the information, I'm like, oh, I know this. I know this. I remember this. Like, oh, apparently yeah. I was very honed in on what she was doing when she was here. Good for you. Exactly. Well, I, some of the characters, I just, we have to start talking. And then I'm like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But this one, I totally understood. Yes. So. I was also glad, though, that Brad accepted his responsibility. And I'm glad he accepted his responsibility, but it's unfair that he's not holding Nell accountable. Yes. I know he mentioned it, but I feel like he should have not said guilty until they could get the rest of the story out. You know what I mean? But he had to make some kind of a plea right then and there. And I really don't think How that he did it just because... How about insanity for working with Nell? There's that. But I really don't think that he was... I know Sonny went and had his visit with him, but I do feel like he was contemplating Mm-hmm. pleading guilty to begin with. I know, he kept Sonny, saying I had a visit from Sonny, but I don't feel like that was the real reason behind it. No, I don't either. And I liked the moment between him and Lucas. That was, that made me go, well, oh, uh, I felt bad for them. Yeah. For, for Lucas, not for yeah. Brad. It is sad, though. 
I mean, it's sad when any marriage falls apart, but especially with something like that. <laughs> when they're going to jail <laughs> for baby napping <laughs> and lying. It's the lying is the more exactly common that it's just, it's really sad because he does love him. Mm-hmm. He just made every single wrong decision you possibly could. Yes. And what said that about him a couple of times? I do get where he was coming from. I mean, I really don't think that in this situation I would have chose to switch babies. Mm-mm. But he was in a really difficult situation. Right. I'm sure he was in shock himself and now has the perfect solution. And you're not thinking about the other people. It's like anything in life. When you really want something, you don't think about all the other people it's going to affect. You just want what you want. So, again, wouldn't have made the same decision, but I feel bad for him that he's going to take such a hard fall for making a decision that I can understand. Especially and possibly doing it now. I know. <laughs> Although Willow throwing the drink uh, in her face. That was so good. And Chase supporting it. And yeah. Like, I just wish I had been here. And Julian, it looked like it slipped out of your hand to me. Yeah. And buying their food. Yes. I mean, it was all around. Everyone hates now. I'm glad that can bring them together. Yes. Do you think that they're going to do what they did with Ned and Alexis and Jackson and Chloe and do a couple swap? That came to mind because Diane said you need basically Mary Uh Poppins, which is only one. Mary Poppins and Snow White rolled into one. Yeah. But I really hope not. I hope not, too, because Michael and Sasha are happy. Willow and Chase are happy. Mm -hmm. like, And they're good for each other. And they have their troubles. That's not going to be just a swap. To look good on paper because Willow already loves Wiley. Yep. So to throw her into that family, she's not going to be able to turn around and leave then, even to be with Chase again. Yeah. I agree. And I don't think, I hope that she wouldn't do it. And I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. And you have to look at best interest of the child. They're not going to strip away Nell's rights, especially now with not saying that she did anything wrong. But Michael's been involved in Wiley's life since he was born. Right. To some degree. It only makes sense that he would have custody than to give it to a perfect stranger. That and he has a stable home. He mm-hmm. has a support system. And just as much money as Nell has, even now that she bought That's her actually his. shares. Right. Because, oh, 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 a couple weeks ago, there was somebody on Twitter. Because remember how we were talking about how we didn't think it was decided yet? Mm-hmm. Somebody on Twitter listened to the show and told us the legal stuff. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I know. Let me find it. Ardo Kratoff at Hoolies, H-O-O-L-E-Z. And I, I am so sorry, on February 24th. Oh, wow. So this got lost in my screenshots. And almost every single week I've been like, I need to bring that up again. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. FYI, Nell sold her legal claim to the shares and Valentine will pursue her probate claim. If the court upholds the bequest of Shiloh, Valentine owns the shares. If not, Valentine loses his gamble and paid Nell for nothing. Mm. So Nell got the money even if, so Valentine is basically taking over her lawsuit. Right. Well, that's good for Nell. she gets off scot-free? I mean, not good for Nell that she gets off scot-free because I don't like her, but good for her that you could actually get that kind of money for something you don't even know it's yours yet. Well, and the thing is, I'm trying to figure out how did she figure, well, never mind, because she did the same thing with Zachary, right? Yep. Okay, never mind. She got his money. She's very good at getting people's money. Tweet about now getting shares. There you go. Do you have an idea for a podcast but don't know where to start? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Anchor is such an easy way to record and edit a podcast, and you can do it from either your phone or computer. Best part is you don't have to worry about getting it out there. Anchor distributes to many platforms, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. You can start making money right away without having a minimum number of listeners, too. Anchor really is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place. My main sentence this week was, Anna can't be this stupid. (laughs) What do you have to go from there? (sighs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) You know, Spinelli and Jason having their conversation about how, what you don't see. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, I'd agree with that. And it's like, "Uh uh-huh. Right. But it's right in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think I even wrote anything down. 
I was so happy that Finn and Violet are moving home. She's so cute. I love her. Me too. She's so cute. And he's so sweet with her. He is. Stop it down. Oh my gosh. And I think it in real life too, because I've seen pictures of him with his kids and it's just like, aw. I think he likes being a dad. I'm glad that they gave his character a kid. I don't know that I'm happy that they're moving home with Anna though. I am for Violet. I am for Violet. She needs that stability, especially since we still don't know where Hayden's at. But long term, I don't see this working out and it's going to be worse for her then. And he apologized to Peter. Yeah, that was, ugh. And, mm, I can't believe that anyone is believing. And Nina mm-hmm. is believing it. Right. Like, come she on. Her aunt better than that. Come on. Right. No. I'm, I'm really unhappy with the whole storyline. I'm just it's so not hurt for Maxie because that is going to, she's going to be devastated. Oh, it's going to be bad. Yeah. I was ready. Like, I don't like Peter because you knew his past, but he was so good for that little bit of time mm-hmm. that I was starting to like him. And now, nope, he's a jerk. Someone needs to take care of him. Well, so right now Spinelli has to figure out that. And he's also, what else is he figuring out? There's two major storylines that he is like the focal point. Oh, he's finding the information behind Sam's. He's trying to find the dirt on her parole officer. Poor Diane. Yes. Seriously. (laughs) That was so funny. She walked into that room and was like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's full time, but she has to keep telling Sam and Jason to stay away from each other. I don't know why she even bothers wasting her breath, though. They're not listening. But then Sam made it sound like she hadn't seen Jason in forever when Elizabeth said, oh, he saved Cameron. I'm so grateful, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, I haven't talked to him in so long. Really? Because you were just with him in the living room. of the And he didn't happen to tell you that he was just in a shootout and saved Cameron and Trina? Exactly. Helped save Cameron and Trina. Right. Because Curtis did mm. a lot. Oh, Trina. Telling him off. There were I s- get it. so many people online that said that they felt like she was over the top and nope. she was being a jerk. I was right there with I her. I get it. I, I get that she should not feel that way, but I 100% understand yes. why she does. Exactly. You and know? she's a child. I know yeah. she's not a baby, but she's a child. Their critical thinking skills are even less developed than I ours. was just going to say your frontal cortex isn't Thank fully you. developed until you're mid twenties. <laughs> so in a <laughs> emotional family crisis, death, whatever, you don't think it through like that. But even if she was our age, if you've never experienced something like that before, yes. and if I perceived it as though someone had any impact on someone I love dying, I would probably not be, oh, thank you so much for saving right. me. Right. Because you love that other person so much, you don't want anything to happen to them. You know, and I think that it, she'll eventually come around and see it that way. Her mom was a lot better this week. She was better. I I don't know where that storyline's going to go. I. So, what was your interpretation? Uh-huh. I think that Trina is Curtis's, and that is why she and Stella matched on 23 and me or whatever yes. DNA test that they chose. Cause I think Curtis is doing math. Well, that's good. There was one section where he's like, I haven't seen you in a while. And she's like, yeah, it's been some time. And I looked at him and I was like, he's doing math in his head right <laughs> he now. He's counting. It's like, so it was 15 years and nine months ago that I last saw you. <laughs> and you met Tagger 15 years ago. I don't know. Right. Cause I could see Tagger taking in a young lady did they say that Taggart was her adoptive dad and I missed it? No. Okay. Someone online, I need to make better notes on who, whatever, because I just read way too much lately. But somewhere online, someone said that he had mentioned he was her adoptive no. dad. And I was like, I did not hear that. I don't think so. Okay. It's always been dad. That was my dad. And then when he died, his last words were, I love that kid. I mean, and you can say that about any kid, but right. I, that was his daughter. Okay. To my knowledge, no. All right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss it because sometimes I miss them. No. I don't think you missed that. Okay. If you did, I did. Oh, well. You like to twin on the same thing. Exactly. Sometimes. <laughs> but I even said, I was, but even before all that, I was like, Katrina really be Curtis's and Taggart knew, but raised her as his own anyway. And that's why it was so important to him to be nice to Curtis mm-hmm. because he never once. Mm-mm. Was attitude with Curtis or anything. Right. He always made a point, even when Curtis went after him. 
which yep. is not very Taggart like. No. And then, you know, he would definitely get at least something, but he always had Curtis's back even against Jordan. Right. Who was his partner, which, you know, partner is just supposed to be. Yes. Nothing should come to Ryan and I, but he's going to choose her husband. Hmm. I hope so. Cause I like when they finish stories and wrap it up. Yes. And that would all make sense. But if Tagger could come back, that'd still be great. Oh, I definitely don't really want him to be gone. Yeah. Nobody. Right. Can always come back. And a stupid memorial. Why was it held at the floating rib? Well, that makes sense because he was friends with Mac. I still feel like there should have been something at the police station or at a church or something, and then everyone go to the floating rib. Okay. Then I can see. I have two issues. Okay. We never got clarification as to why he went to go see Mike. That went nowhere. Right? And Sonny's toast was great, but I wish that they had had them get along even for a week mm-hmm. before he died. Yeah. Because that was not, and they respected each other, you know, and I was glad to see that nobody kicked Sonny. I mean, they tried to, mm-hmm. but Sonny was like, all right, I'm just going to get my toast anyway. Yeah. But I felt like it would have been more authentic had they been on the same side for more than half a day. Mm-hmm. I agree. But it was weird. But I was really glad that he brought Joss. I'm glad that he brought Joss, but I was not impressed with her this week. Trina was totally there for her when all the Oscar stuff was happening, and she didn't seem as there for Trina. Cameron was. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He's so cute. I don't know. She just wasn't in a lot this week. Because one of the first things I said, I was like, why hasn't Joss gone to see Trina? And there she is. Right. Exactly. I, I don't know. I just felt that she would be there at the hospital, but she would have showed up at the hospital whenever he was first brought in and all that kind of stuff. And we didn't see her until the memorial. And even then it was partway through and she popped up and was like, And they've never really talked about the fact that her, that Sonny, her stepdad is who her dad fought against so hard. Right. You know, or the, the business. So that would be possibly how he died. Right. I don't know. I feel like it might be one of those timeline things. Because she was trying to, when Trina was like, okay, distract me. Right. She was being a good friend when yeah. she got there. I just felt that she would have been there She should have been, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially where it was, and I'm not saying that she shouldn't have been there if it was just one of them, but where it was both of them. Right. I mean, those are her two closest. Exactly. And where was Steph? Right. These kids need to quit taking time off. <laughs> Harmony working for Cyrus. The second she walked through the door at Charlie's, I was like, all right, something's up. And then when Jordan got that text that said someone will visit you, it was like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I hope they either develop her character so she has a point to being there or they let her go. Because you don't see her for weeks at a time. And then she pops up, interacts with Willow for like five seconds, and then she's gone again. Yeah. Even she hasn't she's... been there for Willow at all with this whole hi, by the way, Exactly. You're not Wiley's mom. Oh, and your baby died, but I want to still be your mom. That is the opportunity Mm -hmm. to comfort your child. Yes. And I feel like even if she was super involved with the mob, they would still have her have a normal life. Yeah. So she didn't look suspicious. So what the heck? I don't know. Well, she does. She works at one of the um, nursing homes. Yeah, but you never see her outside of that is what I mean. She would stop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a coffee, she right. would stop at Julian's for a drink or something on a more normal basis. They're in those two places all the time. Yeah. And you never see her. Maybe she's actually taking it seriously that she should not be around alcohol and pro- probation. Maybe. That would be a first for anyone on the show. But maybe. But it's okay to go work for a drug kingpin. Yes. Somehow she's forced into that. To get her early parole. Which I don't feel like that's a good enough reason. I don't feel like Cyrus would care if she got early parole. Right. And what I connection like does she have that is a benefit to him? Exactly. There's how many people in prison? He doesn't just, like, randomly pick people and be like, hey, you, want to come work Especially for me? Especially whenever they're letting people out, and the only thing she was in for was, like, cooking the books and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, I mean, she was also in for her inside knowledge of what was going on. Right. In her part. No, I don't. There's, But there's, it wasn't a violent. <laughs> no, it was a violent crime, so never was. mind. It was. I just don't feel like she would have been on Cyrus's radar for him to offer to get her out early. 
I don't know, maybe that because she's more. connected to a cult, so he figured that she's easily manipulated. Oh, that would make sense. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. I guess we'll see where it goes. I think the only thing left is Neil and Alexis. I'm torn with The that night one, before the trial. Mm-hmm. Or the medi whatever, mediation, whatever. Yeah. You're going to do that. Although neither one of them did lie. No, Alexis did lie. Neil did not. Right. Which he knew he wasn't going to. He's a good guy. But really? I don't understand it either. You couldn't have waited a few more days? A few hours, actually? Right. <laughs> Just get through the hearing and you'll be fine. Because they didn't say you can't see each other after this. Mm-mm. Although I think that it was maybe a slap on a wrist and, okay, you do need to seriously follow it the rest yes. of the time. But. Right. But I don't feel like they would prosecute him again. Not that he should go break the rules, but right. I feel like even if they would have started dating the next day, they weren't going to bring him back into the same charges. They didn't seem to take them very seriously because it came from a third-party person. It wasn't Alexis complaining about him. Right. So why did they do that to begin with? I don't know. I don't know. Either. Just to create more stupid and who was drama. And third-party I have no know. idea. I lied. I had a couple more things. Did you have anything else? I had... Oh, Nina with Willow. That was sweet. That was. That was so sincere. I, I liked that a lot. And I really think that Willow took it as it was. Like, it was yes. her truly trying to comfort. And honestly, I mean, Nina could have made quite the story out of it. Right. But... No. She, she did good. I like her to that. rationalize and not make a fool of herself. Yep. That was sweet. And then I had uh, Brooklyn with Mike, which was so sweet. I had that. And I wrote that music has been shown to be a positive benefit. And she talked about that. Yes. Because that's true. Right. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That was really sweet. And I do like that she was trying to figure out a way to be, that she decided to accept Ned's offer. Yeah. Yeah. And she's going to try to figure out a way to maybe incorporate music into it. Yes. That's good. If she can make it her own, that will be good for her. Yep. So that was all. What else did you have? Anything? Molly is surprised that her turning down TJ's marriage proposal was life-changing. I'm over that girl. And I love her. She's so sweet. This whole storyline is stupid. And I get that it was setting us up for TJ to be taken, but it's stupid. I don't... In eight years, you have a conversation about... I can't wait till we have our kids or something like right. that. Yep. I agree. Okay. And when Sam's like, do you want us to, to, you know, private investigate and everything? And she's like, does a private inv- investigator really find things if they don't want to be found? What does she think <laughs> a private investigator does? No, we just do a quick Google search. If it doesn't pop up. Oh, oh sorry. Well, we look at Facebook and if he's checked in, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You are smarter than this, Molly. She is. She is. And then, of course, we were right. TJ has been kidnapped. Right. It didn't and that was, yeah. Rocket scientists to figure that out. No. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's it. That's all that I have on my notes. Yeah. It was a good week. It's an interesting week. I felt like everything went together and, like, moved us along. Yeah, there wasn't really any... Super downtime. Uh-uh. So there you go. You know what it's time for. Dare to do reality check. It's your turn to go first. Okay. So I had my conference in Nashville. And first I want to thank everybody. Our numbers for Monday were ridiculous. Yay. N- no. Well, okay. Yay. But also, it's going to skew things because everyone was trying to go to other platforms and listen, Ah. which adds to the numbers. So it looks like we had a huge boom. But I appreciate the fact that all these people wanted to find it somewhere else. Yes. Right. So thank you. And thank you so much to everyone who reached out to us to let us know. We had no idea what happened because we were released it exactly the same way. Yeah, we did record a little bit differently, Mm -hmm. you know, through Zoom. But... I mean, you're an iPhone, I'm an Android, and I was able to listen to it perfectly fine. Everyone that I talked to, oh, I did have a lot of testers, too, because I was like, can you go to here and let me know if it's <laughs> that working? Nice. But all the Android people could. All the iPhone people couldn't. 
Oh. So I don't know. So Apple, get your stuff together. <laughs> but yeah, so I had my convention. It went really well. Thankfully, got home before all the crazy, I don't want to say crazy, but before the pandemic hit, I guess. And now we're home for the next two weeks. Yeah. I'm still showing houses. One-on-one, we have hand sanitizer. So if you need to move in Pittsburgh, let me know. Yeah, and I have two weeks. A lot of people don't have to go to work. It's a perfect time to buy a house. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, but it's great because it's not great. I'm actually looking forward to this time to just, we didn't have a good winter. Right. So we had, what, one snow day? Mm-hmm. And I've always liked, like, the two- to three-day snow days where you just get to veg out and do nothing. But I'm really looking forward to the time with my family and just – I have my list of home projects that we're going to do, and stuff's going to get done. Okay. I look at it as an opportunity to clean. I absolutely (laughs) am with you. When they first announced it, I was like, okay, I'm going to get all this stuff done. And then yesterday, we did nothing. (laughs) That's okay. But that's okay. I hope so, because yeah, it's absolutely I, okay. I did nothing yesterday. I only showed a couple houses, and other than that, we are kidless. And my husband and I sat right on the couch and vegged, and we napped. It That's was nice. great. Got it. Yeah. So what about you? Mm. You're kind of in the same boat with me. Yeah i I didn't have an exciting conference to come home from. So I was here. Sorry. I can't think of any. Like I had to have done something. Oh, Tuesday was the cookie booth at the convention center. Yeah, that's right. I was like I know I did stuff this week because I remember losing my mind because I triple booked the kids at one point, so I had to reach oh, out to like, no. everyone. And, and I like, wasn't home. I'm so help? sorry. Yeah, that's okay. It was totally my fault. Emily had an appointment downtown that I had scheduled last week, but she had PSAT like review time so I pushed it to this Thursday and then realized I had an appointment for Megan scheduled and Megan's appointment ended at the same time that Madeline gets off the bus and so I was like I don't know what I'm doing but it all worked out everyone got where they needed to be and Madeline wasn't stranded at the bus stop by herself so that was good but Tuesday was the cookie booth and it was it worked out well Madeline got to go have some special time with her dad and the big girls came with me to the cookie booth and we sold like 200 boxes and very nice. We had never gone to the home show before. And so thank you everyone who bought cookies at the home show if you came and saw us. And that's pretty much it. The rest of it is all this school's closed for the next two weeks. I tried to be do you smart. Do have any plans? No. I tried to be smart and do my grocery shopping before they announced the closing because I just had a feeling it was coming from that everything they were staying at the store or at the schools. And I plan on doing nothing. The whole point is to not go get exposed to this. So let's yes. all stay inside and not get exposed you to You can this. go outside. Yes, but not to and go anywhere. I know we're not going to go. One of the kids' friends had a party at one of the big bowling entertainment centers. And they were like, oh, there's nobody here. And I'm like, yeah, there's not supposed to be anyone there. You're right. not supposed to be out and about. And right. God knows they haven't had time to clean and disinfect from absolute whatever. So, no, I told you Matt got me the... Nintendo Switch for yeah. my birthday. So we got the Mario Party game. You have plenty and to do. Yes, Madeline is enjoying kicking my butt at that game. She's really good. It's really kind of annoying. Go, Madeline. It's really kind of annoying. <laughs> she keeps beating me, but that will be what we do for the next two weeks. I just have home projects and try to keep them on as best well, of a schedule as yes. possible. Yes. You know, my husband and I talked about it and we're like, okay. We'll have a couple days, you know, we're going to go do fun. I don't want to say like, we're, we're not going to go out like into the community, but like right. we're looking at the weather and seeing, okay, is there a trail that we can go check out? Yeah. You know, and just get out because. Right. You don't want to be trapped inside yes. for the whole two weeks, but at the same time, we don't need to be going where large quantities of people nope. are. So yeah, we'll stay home as much as possible. They'll still go with their dad next weekend. Mine are with theirs right now. That kind of stuff. I'm not yeah. trying to change regular life things, you know, bedtime will still be the same and all that kind of stuff. But I am going to try to make the most of the time that they're home. Plenty of home stuff that we could do as far as cleaning and throwing stuff out. We'll see. I'll keep you updated in two weeks, let you know where I am with that. Well, we did really well. So because I came back from my trip, I came home to three rolls of toilet paper. So the next day I had to go to the store. And of course it was the day of 
the toilet paper apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And I was so embarrassed buying, because I bought my typical 24 pack. Right. I was like, this is what I always get. I have a family of four. Yes. It's, and it lasts us for like a month and a half. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I feel more embarrassed buying this than I did buying tampons when I was 15. <laughs> See, I didn't feel so bad. The store that I went to still had a good amount of stock, and they had up, you could only buy quantities of three. That's well, good. I only wanted one just to make sure that we had enough because I had a pack at home that we had just opened, and so I didn't feel like I needed to make an ex- explanation. Ex- explanation of why I was buying. I didn't really either, but like I definitely bought a couple other things just so. (laughs) And it was funny because the lady behind me goes, oh my gosh, me too. And she wasn't at my conference. But she's like, I just came back from out of town and it's like, what have you guys, I mean, we have three left. So I mean, that's when I would be buying it anyway. Right. Right. No, it's but uh, all the time. Yeah. (laughs) That's what I think is the freakiest thing is to go on Amazon and there's nothing currently unavailable, currently unavailable. $25 $25 yeah. for 24 rolls? Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. Nope. Still frugal. Oh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so. Well, share with us what you guys are doing during your hopefully, I don't want to say hopefully mandated quarantine, but I think that a lot of places are quarantined. Right. So if you're quarantined, just keep us posted on what you are doing. All the fun stuff. If you have a great idea, if you have an activity for kids. Oh, there was something that I shared. Somebody shared on Facebook. And I'll post this in our notes, too. Oh, well, the free educational websites. That's awesome. There's a company that is Fluency and Fitness. I've never heard of it before. But if you go to fluencyandfitness.com, spell out the word and, register slash school closures, they are giving free access to their website during the next few weeks. So you can help the ch- children learn and burn off that extra energy so parents can keep their sanity. <laughs> but there's over 900 videos to review 60 plus literacy and math topics, K through second grade. But I think that's no, fantastic. that's awesome. And that is so kind because there are so many businesses that could totally take advantage of this. Yes. And like we're having no, a there's... special buy one, get one. No, they're just going to give it for free because no. that's the right thing to do. There's a, I'll send you the other one. There's like a whole list of different scholastics is doing that. Like, Perfect. There's a bunch. So. Yeah, take advantage of that. And remember to thank the people that can't take the time off. That is what's yes. really driven home for me, being that my ex is a police officer, my son works security, all the nurses, all First the responders. doctors, <laughs> all of the firefighters, all of those people. They don't get to just, my niece is a 911 dispatcher, they don't get to just stay home and work from home. You have right. to go into the office. You have to go help. The delivery people, people help. that if you're online shopping right. or if you're using Instacart or something, mm-hmm. you know, those people are. And actually, I think that we should be using more of programs like Instacart because if it's the same 10 people right. out doing the things, exactly, it's better than 100 people out doing the things. Right. So we do have a link, actually. That was not a plug, but we right. do have a link for $10 off your first Instacart on our website under the savings tab. So if you've never used it, give it a try this time and please tip them. Yes. Yes. I made a point even just checking out at the grocery store. Thank you so much yep. for being here to check me out because yep. if you decide not to show up for work, this is 10 times worse of only two registers up or whatever. Yep. There's no reason. Everyone's in the same boat right now. Just right. be kind. Yep. And I was impressed with all the different Restaurants and pizza places, making sure that they would give pizza places right around the corner. Every yes. Tuesday through Friday is going to offer free pizza, chicken fingers, fries, everything, because they're closed on Mondays. Yes. But that's and, and there was a lot of them. Our, our local one made the news, but Dairy Queen in the town close to us is doing it. Perfect. There's like three or four other pizza places. Like, it's just a chain reaction. And then other people have been donating to the pizza place. I know this is going to cost you money. Here's some extra cash or here's that's wonderful. whatever. So that, it's awesome. That's what I hope everyone takes away from these types of situations is everyone trying to help each other out. It's easy to get stuck on the jerk buying 4,000 rolls of toilet paper or all the hand sanitizer and getting angry about it. But instead let's focus on the positive. Exactly. So with that, we're going to talk about one of the most negative and nasty people in general <laughs> hospital history, the bridge. <laughs> I love her though. Well, in, we didn't talk about it, but we'll talk about it on Thursday. Her relationship with Brad is adorable. Yes, yeah. exactly. She can be nice. She has, right now she's nicer than Peter. 
Yeah. She's done some bad stuff, <laughs> but her niceness is better than Peter, so. We will, we will see how this goes. Yeah. That's it. Hold on. All right. So have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pier54podcast at gmail.com. 